morning. Good morning. Because I am now deemed the skater dude of Asheville School by our headmaster, it seems necessary that I start my talk with a story about skating. Here it goes. The sun shone brightly, although it was a cool winter day. Conditions like this are perfect for skating, and on this particular day, as we entered the skate park, I had one thought on my mind. Today is the day that I will ollie that stair set. For those of you who don't know what an ollie is, it is when a skater pops his board up and jumps into the air with the board. This trick is the foundation of modern skateboarding. I approached the stairs and said, today you're mine. <laughs> the stairs were about seven feet long and five feet high. From the top of the stairs, I got a running start and jumped down to the bottom to warm up my legs. Feeling pretty confident, I was ready to give it a try. I got a running start, jumped onto my board, popped an ollie, and was floating above the stairs while focusing, focusing my vision down to my feet and where I would land. While this feeling of free fall was exhilarating, the thought of getting hurt scared me. So I kicked the board away and landed on my feet with a thud. Eager to try again, I picked up my board and ran back to the top. On the next try, the same thing happened. While in the air, I felt that I didn't have enough control of the board to land. This sequence must have been repeated 50 or 100 times, and each time the outcome was the same. Failure. There were a few other skaters cheering me on at the park, and until this point, I had been so focused on my goal that I didn't listen to what they were saying. A guy next to me said, just do it, man. If you want to land it so badly, just commit. I wanted to land the trick badly, so I took his advice. Inhaling a deep breath, I got some speed, popped up my board, soared through the air for a second, and landed smoothly. It was that simple. The advice from that skater dude was true. I had understood that my mind was the only thing that kept me from landing the trick. My legs were in pain from the repetitive attempts, but I didn't even notice it. I was indescribably happy as I rode away from the landing. In that moment, I realized a few things. One, that my persistence kept me from giving up, but also that people, by nature, want to help out others. If it weren't for that guy, who knows how long I would have struggled to land that trick. This made me think, well that day was a great accomplishment for me, in the grand scheme of things, it was extremely insignificant. Though landing, though landing the trick brought happiness for a moment, the majority of the day was spent struggling while trying to reach my goal. It is a common ideal of mankind to want to lead a happy life, and in order to do so, we must know how to enjoy every part of it, even the drudgery. The myth of Sisyphus is a relevant metaphor for life as a struggle. Sisyphus, who is the son of Aeolus, is condemned to an eternity of work for cheating death by escaping the underworld. His eternal punishment is that he must push a boulder up a steep hill, and upon reaching the top of the hill, the boulder rolls back down and he must push it back up. The gods of Greek mythology thought that meaningless toil was the worst possible punishment. Albert Camus, a French philosopher of the 20th century, has an interesting take on this myth. As Wynne read from Camus' essay entitled, The Myth of Sisyphus, quote, what he demands of himself is to live solely on what he knows, to accommodate himself to what is, and to bring in nothing that is not certain. He is told that nothing is, but this at least is a certainty, end quote. In this quotation, he suggests that our lives are meaningless by nature, that we can do nothing that will give our lives meaning. He implies that even a deed such as saving the thousands of people in Gotham City from the wrath of the Joker would hold no value, and I can't seem to accept this fact. On one hand, it's because I'm a fan of Batman, but also because I feel that we are here on this earth for a reason. In this infinitely huge universe with thousands of galaxies, we humans came into existence on this one planet, and this can't have just been a random occurrence. I declare that we do have a purpose for being here, and that is for the advancement of humankind. We each have the opportunity to help achieve this goal, and an experience I had recently brought me to this conclusion. This summer, I did volunteer work at Habitat for Humanity. While working in the store, my tasks, my tasks were simple. I moved furniture, priced items, and organized donations. The simplicity of these tasks <laughs> astounded me, and it seemed that what I was doing had no real purpose. Later, th later that summer, I looked on Habitat for Humanity's website. 
what at, what at first seemed to me like a small local store turned out to be an international organization, building houses in North and South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Their mission statement advocates the creation of opportunities for anyone to own a house by building houses that are affordable, promoting dignity and hope, and supporting sustainable develop development. <coughs> Not only this, but Habitat has a <coughs> disaster relief team that helps out with situations everywhere, and they are currently involved in repairing destroyed homes due to Hurricane Irene. All over the world, there are people who have had homes destroyed or simply can't afford adequate housing. Organizations like Habitat understand this fact and strive to give people around the world the basic necessities of life. The hard work portrayed by Sisyphus in Greek mythology parallels Buddhist teachings from thousands of years ago. The first noble truth of Buddhism is that life is suffering. It is a widely known but rarely accepted truth. Think about your daily life. As a freshman, we are in an odd new environment with hundreds of new faces, trying to understand who we are as a person, and all the while, we must follow a demanding daily schedule. With each successive year of school, we must mentally exert ourselves in more difficult classes, physically exert ourselves in athletics, and socially exert ourselves in attempt to make and develop close friendships. Like Sisyphus, we all have difficulty in our lives, and understanding the inevitability of this difficulty is the first step to leading a meaningful life. Camus implies that we are all pushing our own boulder alone, which is far from the truth. With almost 7 billion people on this earth, we are not alone. Even in a setting as small as Asheville School, this is true. Look around you. All 275 of us are squeezed like sardines of this small chapel. No matter where we are, there will always be someone there to assist us through our struggles. Likewise, there is always someone there who needs assistance, and assisting them should become our mission in life. Every day we must keep the thought of Sisyphus on our minds. Like he, we each have our own boulders to push, but, unlike it may seem, we are not struggling alone. It is we that must take the initiative to give someone else a push, because if we do not, we will all be crushed by the rock slide. Every one of our collective rocks makes up the weight of the world. They are all of different size and weight, but we must enjoy that we have them. The process of pushing our rocks and the rocks of others is what makes us better as individuals, but more importantly, as a society. As you exit the chapel, I will give you each a piece of our collective rock. Go in peace and push on.